Hello everyone, welcome to Databases ICT 271. Today we shall go through lecture one, which is simply introduction to databases. So for this lecture, we shall go through the following. We shall start by looking at some common uses of database systems, characteristics of file-based systems, and then discuss the problems associated with the file-based approach. Then we shall go on then to uh, define the term database, as well as define what uh, a database management system is. We shall then look at some typical functions of a database management system, some major components uh, within a database management system environment, as well as the personnel involved with the, DB the DBMS environment. Then we shall look at the history and development of the database management system, and then finally discuss some advantages and disadvantages of using database management systems. So we start off with some examples of some database applications and the following are some scenarios where you would actually see the use of some database applications. So to start off, whenever you are purchasing something from the supermarket, there's always some database application that runs in the background. So for instance, whenever you go to a store, uh, the store managers might have some inventory that they need to tap to keep track of. So to make this process easier for them, you would uh, deploy and implement a database uh, application that can be able to take uh, track of how much inventory is still there, when certain goods need to be shipped or bought, and also how much of a certain commodity has been bought as well as how much um which time frames do we see spikes in sales or when do we see declines and all of this information can be then used for further uh decision making uh, uh scenarios within a supermarket you can also see a database application whenever you are making purchases on your credit card so this uh, application would ideally store information such as the person your credit score uh, the amount that you have on your credit card, the amount that you have left to spend, how much you've spent, when you spent it, when you are meant to make the minimum payment or pay it off at the end of the month, as well as how much interest is charged on that credit card each month. So all of this information will then be easily stored and useful through using a database application. Booking a holiday at a travel agent as well. Um, so this uh, scenario is where information such as the names of the people traveling, the destination, the day when you decide to travel, the intended day that you are supposed to travel back, how much it costs, and other, uh, for instance, other uh, activities that you may be doing while you're on holiday. We also have uh, using a local library. So this is where you would borrow books from a local library. So this application would store information such as the name, your address, uh, how to contact you, what book you borrowed, and the day you borrowed and when it's expected to be returned. Taking out insurance is another uh, situation where data database applications are used. Renting out a video, so it would be the same scenario as a local library, but in this case, now that renting uh, videos is now obsolete, we now have streaming services, but in the same way that Renting out a video uses database applications. Even streaming services still do uh, use database applications. So for that scenario, when looking at streaming services, you would have information such as the name, maybe an email address associated, what payment method you used, how much is your monthly subscription, and when that subscription was activated or when it will expire. So these are some examples of database applications. So we first go ahead and then look at how things were initially stored before we came up with uh, database applications or database management systems. So we have the files based systems, and this one was based on a collection of applications that perform services for end users. Usually these services were meant for retrieving reports. I d the main idea within a file based system is that each program that was written uh, had and managed its own data. So we shall see an example of what a file-based uh, uh, system looks like. So in this scenario we have, let's assume, two departments. So we have the sales department 
and the contracts department. And when you look at the diagram, we see that both the sales and contracts department have their own specific application pro uh, programs. And each application program is then pulling out data from some file system that contain sales files. In the same way, the contract uh, department also has its own application program that's pulling certain information from the contract files. And when we look at these application programs, we see that both of them have an interface for data entry as well as retrieving reports. But not only that, they also have their own specific file handling routines as well as file definition file definition. So the sales has its own file definitions and the contract has its own file definitions. But then if we look at the bottom, we see that the sales files actually stores three different uh, tables. So the sales files stores property for rent, uh, private owner information, as well as client information. The contract, on the other hand, also stores lease information, property for rent, and client information. By looking at these two files, um, file structures, we see that both property for rent and client is actually also included in the sales files department. But the content in which that these two departments are retrieving is different. So for instance, in the property for rent within the sales uh, department, we are retrieving the property number. We can also retrieve a street, city, postcode, the type of the property, rooms available for that property, the rent associated, as well as the owner. But when we look at the contracts, we only need four fields, or rather five fields. So we need the property number, street, postcode, city, and rent. We don't need the type, the rooms, and the owner number. So we can already see that there's some duplication already that's happening within the file-based system approach. Even the client information is similar, except that the contract files only requires a smaller number of fields as compared to the sales uh, files. We shall then go on and then discuss why storing data using this kind of approach where each department has its own um, files as well as its own specific file definition and file handling routines makes uh, this tedious so when we look at the limitations of a file-based approach, we have the following. Firstly, we have separation and isolation of data. So this simply means that each program maintains its own set of data and that users of one program may be unaware of potentially useful data held by another program. Secondly, we also see scenarios where there will most likely be duplication of data. This simply means that the same data might be held by different programs and as such, it wastes a lot of space and potentially different values or different formats may be used for the same item. So if we go back to our example and look at our sales and contracts department, we see that both require client information and property for rent. If the format in which property for rent is stored in the sales department uh, is different from that of the contracts, it means uh, transferring of data from one department to be another might become tedious and this might create more work. Another, dis another limitation or disadvantage of using the file-based approach is simply is also data dependency. So the file structure is defined within the program code. Another and fourth limitation of the file-based approach is that incompatible file formats. So the programs are written in different languages and so cannot be easily accessible by other files. So if we go back to our, our example, so if the sales application uses a specific kind of format or programming language that is separate from contracts, we cannot simply exchange the way in which these uh, applications are written to retrieve information from their respective uh, file structure. So uh, whenever there's a change that is done, a complete overhaul has to be done where the program has to be rewritten in order to suit those changes and accommodate those changes. So those are the limitations of the file-based approach. As such, uh, the database approach was introduced because the, 
the definition of data was embedded within the application programs, but uh, we want a scenario where we can easily manipulate the data and the definition of the data without having to change or edit the application program. So rather than being stored separately and independently, so we want things to be stored in a centralized location and little or no change changes should affect the application program. So as a, route, as a result, the database and database management system uh, was created to answer the limitations of the file-based approach. So we then go on to discuss what a database is and then what a database management system is. So a database is simply a shared collection of logically related data, but we should also have a description of this data, which is referred to as metadata or the system catalog. So a database is simply designed to meet the information needs of an organization. And remember, so we have logically uh, related data and a description of this data, which is a system catalog. And we, the reason why we need a description of this data is that whenever information is easily transferred from one organization or it changes hands from one person to another, we can easily understand what's going on. So logically related data comprises of one entities. So these are things that we are trying to model. So in the scenario that we were given concerning the file-based approach, we can assume that that is a uh, property for rent or some property investment company that we're trying to model. So those are the entities, but those entities also have some certain characteristics which we refer to as attributes. So examples of attributes that we've seen are, for instance, when we're looking at the client, we had the client number, we had the name, uh, we also had the street, the postcode and other relevant address information for the client as attributes. And secondly, or rather thirdly, we need some relationships that um, bridge the gap between these two entities. So relationships are what uh, will actually create this logical relationship between entities to give a full picture of what the organization is trying to achieve. So if we look at our example, we can assume that the organization is simply trying to get property for rent list out to potential clients. So once we've understood what a database is, we can then look at what a database management system is and the role that it plays. So the database uh, management system is simply a specific software. In this case, it's an application program that enables users to define, to create and control access to the database. The database in itself is actually the container that holds all the data. So this is where you'd find specific information for individual clients in our scenario that we were given or property for rent. But then on top of the actual data, we need a way in which we can one, create those entities as well as maintain those entities and even uh, perform operations where we can also create those relationships within those entities and also control access to that uh, database. If we go back to our file based system, when we look at control, we already saw that the contract department didn't require all the information regarding the property for rent table or entity. And also it didn't require the full table and attributes of the client. So this is where we also control access by using a database management system. So the database application program, uh, so rather a, a DBMS is simply an application program that interacts with the database by issuing appropriate requests through SQL comments to the database management system. So moving forward, so having uh, looked at the limitations of the file-based approach and seeing that the database approach was meant, was created to address the limitations, we then look at the same scenario but in this case, we look at how this problem is sorted within the database approach. So in this case, we still have our sales department and our contracts department. But now we see that rather than having two separate links to access two separate databases, we only have one. 
So we have sales application programs that sits here where the data and entry, where data entry and reports takes place for the sales. We also have the contracts application programs seated within some form of computer system somewhere on a server that deals with data entry and reports for the contracts. But in this case, we direct all our instructions to the database management system. So this is the one that will issue out the SQL commands that will either provide uh, restrictions, it will create or manipulate the data such that it only retrieves relevant information that's specified within the sales and the contracts department through their specified application pro uh, programs. And we look now to see that rather than having two storage uh, units, we now have one storage unit. So we now see that the property for rent, a private owner, client, and list details plus the file definitions are all stored with within the database structure here. And we can see at the bottom that rather than having two instances where we have a separate uh, file structure and database file structure for the sales and contracts, we have one. But the database management system is able to filter exactly what the contracts department needs to see as well as what the sales department is in to see. But the entire definition for property for rent is only represented once. Private owner is only represented twice. The client uh, entity or information is also only stored once. In the same way, the list information is only stored once and management access in terms of manipulation is done through the database management system. So when we look at the database approach, we have the following two languages. So whenever you are interacting with a database using a database management system, you are either using a DDL or a DML. So a DDL is simply uh, stands for data definition language. And this one permits specifications of data type structure and any other data constraints. When we look specific, when we start discussing SQL, you will see that the create statement is one specific SQL statement that is categorized as a data definition language. All these specifications are stored within the database. So a create statement again is an example of a data definition languages because within the create statement, you are specifying things like uh, the name of the table or the entity, the attributes of that um, entity, you'll be giving its storage uh, types such as characters, integers, blobs, and so on and so forth, as well as how much storage space should it occupy within the data space, as well as how does this entity or table relate to one another, either by uh, creating foreign keys or primary keys on that specific table or entity. You will look, uh, we'll look at definition languages and ma manipulation languages once we start looking at MySQL. But for now, know that we have two main types. And then the second one is data manipulation languages. So this one is generally used for inquiring facilities. So this is more of the query language and the, the statement that you use the most within manipulation is the select. So this is where reports are generated. So with the database approach, we have controlled access to a database, and this may include the following. We have a security system infused within the database approach, an integrity uh, system is infused, a concurrency and control system, as well as recovery control system and user accessible catalog. So all of these will become apparent once we start looking at the practical side and when we start executing X SQL commands. And when we talk about the database approach, we cannot uh, do without talking about views. So a view is simply something that allows us to see a certain section of the database that pertains to what rights that you have. So views simply allow each user to have his or her, her own view on the database, meaning depending on that role that you have on the in the organization that you're working with, a database management system is able to give you only the relevant information that you need to see. So for instance, the example that we looked at uh, from the file-based system earlier, uh, when we looked at the client information from the contract point of view, the contracts department did not require all the fields within the client uh, table. 
Using views, the database management system is able to appropriately allocate what needs to be seen by each individual depending on the role that they have. So a view is essentially some subset of the database and we can now discuss some of the benefits. So when we look at view benefits, we have reduced complexity. It provides a level of security in the sense that people who aren't allowed to first of all view that data are not given access to that data, but also enables that people who are not supposed to edit certain information cannot make changes to that information. It also provides a mechanism to customize the appearance of the database. So with views, the way in which our reports are generated through the application programs is non-dependent on how the structure of the actual database looks like. So what you may see might actually be very different from how the fields are even evenly arranged uh, in the database. So it presents a consistent and changing picture in the structure of the database, even if the underlying database changes. So we then go on to discuss the components of a database management system environment. So we have the following um, components. So we need hardware and software. So this is machine dependent. So this would be where we have a server that houses the database uh, system itself. Then we have the data itself that is required. So this will come from an organization. And then we have the procedures and the people as well, which will also come from the organization. Then we look, so just to further explain what these are. So hardware can run from a PC to network computers. Software would be the database management system itself, the operating system, network software, and also other application programs. Data, this is used by the organization, and the description of this data is called a schema. Then we have the procedures. These are the instructions and rules that should be applied to the design and use of the database. So this is where mostly restrictions and security access are highlighted under procedures as well as other company functions that it has. And then finally, people. People who will be interacting, viewing reports, entering the data, as well as making use of the information that is retrieved. Then we have roles within the database environment. So we have the following roles. So we have a data administrator and then we have the database administrator as well. Within the database environment, we can also have database designers. So these would be people who are specifically hired to either work on the logical and physical layer of the database. So once we start looking at the database model, these logical and physical layers will actually make sense. Then we have application programs. So the application programs work hand in hand with the database designers, the administrator, as well as the data administrator. So application programs could be written in either, in any programming language. So most the most common ones are PHP, Java. So any language that you can use to pull out and send data to the database. And then we have end users. So these may be sophisticated or just simple users. So once we've now looked at the roles, the components, the history advantages, or not yet advantages, we then look at the history of database systems. We had the first generation, which were hierarchical and network uh, database systems. And we shall see these either in this lecture or the next lecture, on a diagram of what this looks like. Then we have the second generation, which are relational. And relational uh, what we use today, although we have the third generation, which is object oriented or object relational. So we then discuss the advantages uh, of a database management system as well as their disadvantages. So of course, now that we have seen the limitations of the file based approach, we then look at the advantages that were have been brought about by creating a new database approach. So the first one is the control of data redundancy as well as data consistency. Thirdly, we have more information from the same amount of data. We now have data sharing for if we look at our file-based approach, 
sharing of data is more apparent because we are accessing one database system rather than two database system files. Then we have improved data integrity, meaning the likelihood that information is different across departments is unlikely because you're accessing the same data source. There's also more improved security. And because we have a centralized system, there are enforcement of standards across the board and we can easily scale database management systems. We also have balancing of conflicting requirements because we're looking at the central database uh, location, improved data accessibility and responsiveness, as well as increased productivity. Furthermore, we also have improved maintenance through data dependence, and we shall look at data independence in detail once we start looking at data models. Increased concurrency, meaning we can execute multiple queries and query and access the database at, uh, at the same time from more than two departments in our case that we were mm. shown. Then we have improved backup and recovery systems that are inbuilt in database management systems. But of course, with everything that has uh, good sides, we also have disadvantages. So some of the disadvantages of database management systems include we have complexity because this is a separate application software on top of the application software that you have to write for the organizations. The size of these systems are huge as well as the cost of acquiring a good database management system might be expensive. Of course, there are free versions available. So we have additional hardware costs as well as cost of convergency and performance sometimes is also a disadvantage, but we also have a higher impact of failure. If we look back to our example, where both departments were now accessing one database, if that database system or that database file crashed, it meant that no one can actually do work. So we have a higher impact.